All right, so ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be a conversation about the law of conservation of mass and the law of conservation of energy. But we're going to use photosynthesis and cellular respiration to talk about how mass is conserved and energy is conserved in both formulas. So here you see that I have 12 gray Legos that I'm going to use to represent the hydrogens that are in the formula. I have 18 blue that I'm going to use to represent the oxygens that are in the formula. And I have six red that I'm going to use to represent the carbons that are in the formula. All right, so here is the first step of photosynthesis. Okay, and I can add in my equal sign because uh, the rest of the formula is going to be over here. But what we start with is we start with light energy. We start with six waters. And for the waters, I've got one oxygen, which is my blue, and two hydrogen, which is my gray. So that's H2O. And I have six of them. And then I have six carbon dioxides. Carbon dioxide is one carbon and two oxygens. So all total, if you count them up, I've got six oxygens plus seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, my 18 oxygens. You see the six carbons there, so six carbons. And then two, four, six, eight, 10, 12 of the grays, those are my 12 hydrogens. So my law of conservation of mass, which says matter cannot be destroyed or created. It can only be turned from one form into another. That's what we're looking at here. We will also be looking at law of conservation of energy, which says the exact same thing, but instead of matter, it says energy. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be turned from one form into another. So with this formula, photosynthesis is going to turn these into something new, recycle them, and is going to turn light energy into a different form of energy. So it's going to adhere to both of these laws, law of conservation of energy and law of conservation of mass. Now I'm going to take these apart and set up on the other side of the equal sign what happens at the end of photosynthesis, and I'll put that video next. Okay, here I am back with the second half of photosynthesis. So I took all of those Legos and I just rearranged them. So let's talk about law of conservation of mass first. This is an O2 and I have six of them. It is two oxygen atoms stuck together to make an oxygen molecule. So two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. And then over here, you can see 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 18 oxygen. I counted the blue. So 12 oxygen here plus another six in this big molecule. This big molecule represents glucose, which is stored chemical energy. And we'll talk about the energy in a second. So we know we have 18 oxygen. But we also have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 of the little gray hydrogens. And if I turn it sideways, you see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 carbons. So this molecule has 6 carbons, 12 hydrogens, and 6 oxygens. But there's only one of them that's made during photosynthesis. For every time that one is made, they make six molecules of oxygen. So the law of conservation of mass stays true because what we started with is what we're ending. We're not making any new atoms and we're not destroying atoms. They're just being changed from one form into another. Same thing with energy, with the law of conservation of energy, that light energy that we had at the beginning of photosynthesis has been transformed into stored chemical energy. It hasn't been destroyed. 
It hasn't been just created out of thin air and magic. It has been transformed from one form to another, which is law of conservation of energy. So photosynthesis meets the requirements for both law of conservation of mass and law of conservation of energy. And now we're going to talk about cellular respiration. So for cellular respiration, all I did was I moved the equal sign over here because the end result of photosynthesis is the starting point for cellular respiration. These are the reactants for cellular respiration, which happens in the mitochondria. Animals have to eat plants to get glucose, or they have to eat other animals that have eaten plants. It's part of the whole food chain, all right? They have to eat to get the glucose, the energy that they need. Remember, this glucose is stored chemical energy. They also have to breathe to get the oxygen that they need. In addition, this is not just something that animals do. Plants also have mitochondria because the whole reason why plants are making this in their leaves is because when they wanna make new cells or repair damage or grow, they have to take some of these, break them apart, release the ATP energy, which is where we're going in a little bit, and they use that energy to make new structures, new cells, and to grow and repair tissue. So plants are also using cellular respiration. I know that our main focus this unit has been on animals doing cellular respiration and plants doing photosynthesis, but in reality, plants do both. They do photosynthesis and cellular respiration. All right, I just bumped the camera, but it's okay because it's still up. So here's what I'm gonna do. We already counted these, but I'm gonna count them again. Remember, there's 12 over here, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So I start with 18 oxygen. I start with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 hydrogen. And I also start with six carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six. I need to stop bumping the camera. So law of conservation of mass. What I start with should be identical to what I end with. It's just rearranged in a different form. Law of conservation of energy. What I start with has to be equal to what I end with but it's okay for it to be in a different form as long as it's all still there. I'm going to stop the camera and rearrange everything so that we can see the end of cellular respiration and we can talk about law of conservation of mass and law of conservation of energy. And now I'm back and again, this should look familiar, but the equal signs on the opposite side of the equation because remember in photosynthesis, this is what we started with. In cellular respiration, this is what we end with. We have six water, so H2O, and we have six carbon dioxides, CO2. So if we count them up, one, two, three, four, five, six blue, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. 18 oxygen, because remember, each of these has two oxygens on it, not just one. We, you could see the six red here. So six carbon are still here. And you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 of the little gray hydrogens. So the law of conservation of mass that says that matter cannot be created nor destroyed. It can only be turned from one form into another in both cellular respiration and in photosynthesis. These atoms are just being rearranged into different molecules. Photosynthesis is turning water and carbon dioxide into glucose and oxygen, and cellular respiration is doing the exact opposite of that. It's turning oxygen and glucose into hydrogen, uh, water and carbon dioxide, all right? Law of conservation of energy with the end of cellular respiration. Remember, we had that glucose molecule and that glucose molecule was stored chemical energy. Your body, your mitochondria, tear that molecule apart and they turn it into these and they also release ATP energy. So they have converted that stored chemical energy 
into a different form of energy, but the same amount of energy is still there. Nothing has been created. Nothing has been destroyed. It's all still the same. So mass is still the same. It's conserved. Energy is still the same. It's conserved. All right. And then the last thing I want to talk about, for those of you that have not gotten this, this is crucial. The stuff that animals make is exactly what plants need. So animals breathing in and out are producing carbon dioxide that the plants need for photosynthesis. And animals breathing in and out, you know that there's water vapor in your breath. That's why it, it's uh, steamy whenever it's cold outside. Uh, but you also produce water that you get rid of in other ways through sweat and through urine. That water is also something that plants use. So cellular respiration is making the things that plants need. Photosynthesis is making the things that animals need. It's making glucose and it's making oxygen. So the two formulas are two halves of basically the same formula. The input of one is the output of another and the output of one is the input of another. It's a cycle. It's all part of the carbon cycle, which you should already know about. All right. Thank you, everyone.